What's up guys, Cheese here and welcome to a special new game on the channel. That's right, this is Valheim. Uh, Valheim is an amazing game. It's been out for a couple weeks now. Uh, it's really, really cool. I've been playing it to death over on Twitch. Uh, it's got, it's a Viking themed survival game. Uh, it takes a lot of cool things from a lot of survival games like some stuff from Minecraft and Ark and Conan. It's a really cool game. Uh, it's got a low res style, like the characters and the models are kind of low res, but the effects and like the wind and the light bloom and everything is like really like modern. It gives it this really, really cool uh, vibe. It's, it, I really like it. The music's amazing. It's 19.99 on Steam right now, so it's a great game. Definitely recommend checking it out, but I've been absolutely obsessed with it. So I figured I'd show you guys how to do it. So we're gonna start in the very beginning. How you can find your server, create a character, get into the game, exactly what to do, how to start all the way through the fifth boss, which is the five bosses that are currently available in the game. So if you guys like this video, please do me a huge favor and flex on that like button. And for more daily Viking survival awesomeness, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so here we are. We're at the main menu. So we're gonna go into a game. Hit start game, obviously. Now, this is the character that I have been playing over on Twitch. He's basically maxed out. We've beaten all the bosses, but we're going to start over. So I'm going to make a new character. We're going to go new. And here we go. Here's our character creation options. You can be male or female. We're going to be male. You can be uh, skin tone from super light to dark. We're going to just pick somewhere in the middle here. Hair options. There's a bunch of different hair options. I personally am into side swept one because i like my uh my my vikings a bit emo he's in emoking needs work okay here we are so and then uh beard options i like my guy to be like super dwarfy so there's all sorts of different beard options but i like that like crazy dwarf one so here we go now hair tone uh is kind of interesting so I guess because they're the Vikings, they're, they're basically you can go from black hair to red hair. Those are basically the options like yellow. So black, red, yellow are your options. And then there's a blondness shader uh, slider. And you can go basically really dark to like super glowy neon colors. So these are basically our options. We're gonna go, I think we're just gonna go dark hair this time. We'll go. He's looking pretty cool, looking pretty Viking -y. Viking y. Uh, we're gonna name him Cheddar. We already have a cheese. You can't have two characters named the same. We're gonna hit done. We have our brand new character. Here we are, we're ready to go. Now we can start a server. You can start our own single player world. We just hit start game. Uh, if we were gonna go into our single player world, we would hit new. But first I'm gonna show you guys how to get onto a server. Some of you guys may be trying to play with your friends or have your own servers. I, at the time of this recording, can't get any of this join game server stuff in game to actually work. I don't know if it's, I, I, I don't, I can't get it to work and my friends can't get it to work. I don't know if it's just not functioning currently, if it's gonna be fixed or whatever. At the time of this recording, it doesn't work. So if you wanna join your friend's server or your server, I'll show you how to do that right now. Okay, so now we're, we're in Valheim, but we wanna get on our server. How do we do that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up our Steam so here's my Steam homepage. We're gonna go to view. We're gonna hit servers. And here's my, uh, here are my favorite servers. Oh, pull it over to the correct screen. Here's my favorite servers right here. Okay, I already have mine added. But if you didn't already have your server added to favorites, you would hit add a server. You would copy and paste. Now I recommend copying and pasting so often if you try to type it out, you'll make a little mistake and then you won't figure out what's wrong. Always copy and paste IP addresses, but you'll copy and paste your IP address in right here. You'll hit find games at this address. If it says the name of the server you're looking for, you hit add this to my favorites. If it is not the server you're looking for, you probably copied the IP or did something wrong. So you wanna look up the IP, make sure you have the correct IP, and then hit add this server to my favorites, and then it'll appear right here. So now that I have the server on my favorites, I click on the server, I hit connect, now there's a password on my server, so I put in my password. And I hit connect again. And now what'll happen is it'll bring me up in the game. So now in the game, it brings me to the character selection screen. 
So now if I select my character in game, and then I would enter in the password again, and I'd be able to log into the server. But we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go back to the single player. So I'll show you how to start that up right now. Okay, guys, we're back at our character creation screen or character selection screen, excuse me. And we're gonna choose our character and open up a new single player world. So we wanna pick the character we want. We want this character, Cheddar. I'm gonna hit start. It opens up this menu right here. Now, I'm gonna hit new world because I'm gonna create a new, a new game. And now uh, this game, the map and dungeons and everything about the game is procedurally generated. So each time you start a new world, the game calculates the world for you and plans it out. And then each time it's different based on this seed. So just because you see a specific thing, boss, a mountain, uh, an ore in my world in a specific spot does not necessarily mean it'll be in the same place on your world. Each world is unique unless you use the same seed. So I'm going to name my seed. Actually, we're going to go in the cheese seed. So if you guys want to play along with me and your playthrough, use the same seed and then all our stuff will be in the same spot. So if you want to be on the seed that I'm on, it's cheese or you can just leave it random. You're going to name your world. We're going to call this uh, the cheese YT world. It's going to be my cheese YouTube world and we're going to hit done. So now we have a server started right here. We can we can hit start and we'll go right into the game. Uh, something that's really cool about this game is your character persists on all the different servers you play on. So I could go on to my server right now and work on my world and level up my character's skills and get gear and things. And then if my friend is like, hey, why don't you come over to my server and play with me? I can take the same character, the same gear, anything that is on my character, all his skills and everything stays with him when I log out in any server or game that I go play. So it's really, really cool. Your character persists. So you can go help your buddy and still keep working on your character. Go back to your world, play your character there. You can keep the same character. It's really, really neat. But all right, here we go. On to actually playing of the game. So we're going to click on the world we want. We're going to hit start. And here we go. I even like the little touch of like the old school like cursor. Is anybody old enough? Anybody watching the video remember customizing the cursor on your computer? That used to be a thing that people would do back in the olden days. My game break. Oh, there we go. Okay. Thought we were broken. Long ago, the All-Father Odin united the worlds. He threw down his foes and cast them into the Tenth World, then split the boughs that held their prison to the World Tree and left them to drift, unanchored a place of exile. For centuries, this world slumbered uneasily, but it did not die. As glacial ages passed, kingdom rose and fell out of sight of the gods. When Odin heard his enemies were growing once again in strength, he looked to Midgard and sent his Valkyrie to scour the battlefields for the greatest of their warriors. Dead to the world, they would be bored again. In Valheim! It's kind of an epic uh, entrance deal. All right, now we're being flown in by the giant, uh, I don't know, it kind of looks like a guy in a bird costume. I don't know what this is. Someone that knows more about the lore would probably know what this guy is, but he carries us in. Let's go. We're doing it. Epic lightning and bird flying action. Kind of wish it was. Hopefully, it clears up when we land. I don't really want to start with like in this crazy thunderstorm. All right, we're we're coming in for a landing. Pull up, man. We're coming in too hot. Okay, uh, he dropped us. Okay. Oh, all right. We've spawned in the world immediately, getting attacked. So uh, left click is punch. So we're gonna uh, left click these guys a little bit. Get rid of this guy. Yeah, it's kind of awkward to start. Now, uh, some things about what's on your screen in the bottom middle there, that yellow bar, that is your stamina. When you're out of stamina, you won't be able to punch or run. So you want to try to manage that. On the uh, left side bottom over there 
The red 25, that is my health. The fork is uh, my, my food. In the top left, it shows your hot bar. Right now, all I have is a torch in number one. In the top right is your mini map. And it, I'm a little bit wet. So I'm gonna be wet for another 123 seconds, which I believe makes me consume more food and maybe something else. Okay, so we're gonna talk to this guy. Uh, you wanna make note of this on the map. So you spawn in right here. Everybody will spawn in here, wherever it is in your world. And as you notice, the world is absolutely huge and all procedurally generated. You can sail all the way to the edge of all this entire map. But this right here is uh, the boss um, podiums. This is where you're gonna come after you defeat each of the bosses and hang their trophy on these different stones to unlock the different powers. So there's five different bosses that, to beat so far in the game. So you're gonna wanna make sure you know where this is. It's, it's marked on your map, but you wanna remember this spot. All right, let's talk to the Raven here and see what he has to advise us about. Welcome to the 10th world, warrior. I am Huggin, sent here to guide you in your travels. The megaliths surrounding you are the sacrificial stones. They represent the forsaken, which you must slay to in order to ascend to Valhalla. So, like I said, these are the different bosses we have to slay. Uh, this right here, well, the bird will tell us. Here we go. Let's talk to the bird. These magical stones were scattered, scattered throughout the lands by Odin as signposts pointing toward the ritual grounds of the Forsaken. If inspected closer, this one will reveal the summoning place of Eichther, your first prey. He is a mighty beast, so you need to properly arm yourself before even attempting to defeat him. Okay, so the game has given us our first uh, big kind of long term short term like, quest is to beat the first boss. So now if we uh, click on this magic stone here, it reveals the boss's location, okay? So we're here, we spawned here. The first boss is here. Now what we need to do is get geared up and get ready to fight the first boss. Now that's gonna take a little bit. So the way unlocking things and crafting and doing everything in this game works is as you pick things up, it unlocks the things that you can craft with that item, kind of like Minecraft does. So. This is what we're going to be looking for here in the beginning here. This is a stone on the ground. If you push E, it pops a stone out and then I pick it up. Okay, so I found stone. This is a branch on the ground. We'll pick that up. We'll get wood. And now we can craft a club, a stone axe, a hammer, all sorts of super useful things. So now we're going to do the survival game thing. We're going to pick up rocks and stone for a little bit or rocks and wood. Now, as you can see there, my skill just leveled up. Lots and lots of things you have in this game. Not everything, but most of the things you do in this game have a skill attached to that, to the value. So as you're doing things, you're going to keep leveling up your skills. If you push tab, this is your backpack right here. These are all the slots you can carry. So it's eight by four. This 32 items this is all you can ever carry. So you're going to manage your inventory. And on top of how many items you can carry, there's also a weight system. So this is showing our armor right now. Our armor is only one. We only have rag clothes on. So our armor is really bad. And we're at 16 out of 300 weight. Oh, we're being attacked. Hold on. Let's handle this guy. Come here, fool. We're just going to punch this guy a little bit. These are the graylings. These are the woodland creatures that you'll run into. In the beginning, these are basically the, the, beginning, uh, the beginning mobs. They're kind of little easy guys to beat up. They're kind of useful, though, because they drop this here, which is resin which is good for torches and other things. Okay, so back to uh, tab to open up the backpack and crafting menu. Now, these are the crafting menu right here. We can make a hammer, a torch, stone club, uh, stone axe and a club, those so, so far. And over here, if on the top is um, all the different things you found in the game. This is all the different trophies. So as you kill mobs and things, they'll drop trophies, mobs and bosses. This is where you'll find their trophies. And here you can turn PVP on or off. For yourself, we're gonna leave it off. But here under skills, this will show you how you're progressing throughout the game. So as I run, my run skill is gonna go up and then the speed and stamina drain when running is improved. Same with clubs, my club damage will go up, my blocking gets better. Anything you do gets better and better. But if you die, your skills go down. So you want to be really careful. There's kind of a penalty for death in this game. So let's get cracking. We got some berries here. We're going to pick the raspberries. Raspberries found. We need a little bit of stone and uh, wood to get crafting of the basic items here in the beginning. So let's try to get some of that going. Punch the little trees. 
kind of the main thing that's a little bit hard to find in the beginning is the stones. Because you can't punch the stones. Is this tree ever going to fall down? There we go. This guy's got something to tell us. Most items can be crafted. All right. He just tells us that the more things we pick up, the more things we'll be able to craft. So there's some wood here. Aha, stones. Stones are kind of the tricky thing to find in the beginning. Because they're a little bit hard to see. They're not everywhere. And like I said, you can't just start, uh, start punching the bigger boulders to get them. So you got to find those little ones on the ground, which is kind of a pain. What's up, buddy? Uh, I have found a snack. Consume it to improve your health and stamina. But be aware that before long, you will grow hungry again. So try to always have at least a couple of different meals ready. Okay. So now we're into something else in the game. Eating in this game is much more important than you're going to be used to in most survival games. Uh, by eating and drinking quality food in this game, you can increase your stamina a huge amount and you can increase your health up to 10 times or more. You can get your health up to 200, 300, really, really high. So we're going to eat this uh, raspberry. And as you can see in the bottom left down here, it made our health go up, it made our stamina go up. And you can eat three things at a time. And ideally, you want to eat three high quality meals and then it'll make your uh, health and stamina really, really high. But that's later on once you can cook and you have higher quality ingredients. Right now, we're just going to try to eat to live. So we're going to eat raspberries and whatever we can come across for now. Uh, we should be getting close to uh, being able to craft. Let's see what we can craft. We, all right, we can make a stone axe. Let's do that. Craft. Um, now, this top right here is going to be your hot bar. So you're going to put that wherever you want it to be number wise. I want it to be there. We're going to also make a hammer. Okay, which is great. The hammer is uh, the main building tool in this game. As you can see, I made a hammer and unlocked all sorts of other things. Uh, the hammer works a little bit tricky, though. So let's cut down a little bit of trees. Now, uh, the tree falling in this game is actually really interesting as well. Uh, the trees actually have like a ragdoll or like physics to them. So when I cut this tree down, if I'm not careful, it can land on me and kill me. So I got to be really, really careful to cut. You got to watch which way the tree's falling. Watch as it hits other trees. You can actually knock other trees down. I actually found uh, it quite satisfying to make a game out of it where I try to uh, knock trees down into other trees and try to knock a whole bunch of them down in like a, you know, a domino effect kind of situation. Really, really fun. All right. But we're going to be responsible server members and clean up our stumps because I hate that. Let's get this chopping. So once you chop a tree down, you want to chop it until it splits into two bigger logs. There we go. So and then it'll fall down in two bigger logs while one's stuck up in the tree. And then you break it down one more time. And it'll split up into a bunch of log pieces that we can actually pick up as wood. So break it down one more time. There we go. So we got some wood. There's another rock in the ground right here. We're going to open up our crafting menu. We can make a club, which is good. It's going to be our first weapon. So now we're doing pretty good. We got our first weapon. We got our first tool to cut down trees with, and we got a hammer. So now we're going to start a little base. Um, this guy is just going to tell us about using the building hammer. With this tool, you will raise mighty halls and towering fortifications. Start by building a workbench. This in turn will enable you to construct other things. Okay, so we're going to get into how the hammer actually works. It's a little funky in the beginning to get used to. It works a little bit different than some other survival games in the building uh, aspect. I'm just trying to find a decently flat little spot somewhere so we can start a, a build. Uh, in this game, it's much easier to build on flat ground than it really is on um, like anything that's not very level. This looks good right here. Okay, this should be good. We're going to make a little room right here. Clear this tree out. We're going to clear these out a little bit. As soon as I get my stand back. And this should be a nice flat spot. Okay, so we pull out our hammer. Hammer is out. When you have your hammer out, this is how you're going to build. Now, if you push... Oh, getting attacked. Hold on. Let's just club this guy to death. There we go. So we pull our hammer out. Now, if we push right click... It'll show us all the things that we can currently craft. We can uh, this first click is repair. So once you've already built something, you click on this if you want to repair it. So if I want to repair my build, I click around that with that. We'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. 
Uh, we open up the hammer again so I can make a campfire, some log and piles. Um, this is what we're going to have to put down first, this workbench. Uh, we can put the cooking station, no building, no furniture. Okay, so the very first thing you have to make is a workbench. So it's going to make me put this on a flat spot because uh, 10 wood to make. So when I put the workbench down, the workbench, now it unlocks all sorts of other new things over here. Arrows, a hoe, wood building pieces. We just unlocked all sorts of stuff there. So we're going to talk to the bird again. The workbench allows you to craft complex pieces as well as giving you access to lots of more building pieces to construct with the hammer. So as we can see, if we have our hammer out, uh, the workbench has a radius around it or a circle. Let's, let's not uh, show the circle of. There we go. So this white circle is the circle that we're allowed to build in once you put down a workbench. So the uh, the hammer basically only works if you have a workbench down and you are in the radius of that workbench. So the hammer allows you to put the workbench down, put a cooking station down, a fire, uh, a, a uh, campfire, and that's about it. So you have to put get a bench down. Now, if I try to access this bench, it'll say station needs a roof. So in order to be able to actually use this table, you have to build a little shelter around it. Now, I'll show you a little cheap shelter that I've uh, been using. It's basically the cheapest you can make and have it be sheltered as far as I've been able to figure out. So you just want to put one little wall on the side of it. Uh, the building in this game uh, works a little different. So I push uh, three to bring my hammer out. I right click. Now, here's all the different things I can build. Uh, we're going to build a wall. So I'm going to click the wall. And now I have a wall out. Now, anywhere where it's not red, I can place it. So there I can't place it, but anywhere else it'll place. But we're going to, and uh, if you middle mouse wheel spins it around. So middle mouse wheel spins it around. So I want to turn it so it's the right way and it'll snap right to the other wall. So boom. And again, I want to turn this a little bit this way. And we've made like a little horseshoe box for our thing. We're going to right click again on our hammer. Oh, we're a little bit, we're out of wood. So now we need to chop a little bit more wood. Just a little bit more. I think we need like another four pieces to put the roof on maybe, but we'll get a little bit more. Just make sure we have enough. We have plenty. There we go. And there we go. Nice. Okay. So now we push three to pull our hammer out. We push right click. We go back to all the different things we can make. Now, what we're going to use is this uh, thatch rooftop right here. And if we turn it sideways, or you can even use it this way too, but I guess I think it looks a little bit better sideways. But you turn it this way sideways, put one on top. And uh, the pieces snap wherever your pointer is looking. So if I want to snap a P this roof to that roof, if I put my my cursor right on the edge of that roof, it'll snap in, see? So that's where your, your building happens in this game, where you put your cursor. It's all about aiming your cursor. So you aim it there and boom. And sometimes it'll make you put another wall right here, but this should be enough. There we go. So now we're able to access our table, which allows us to make wood arrows a hoe, a torch, and then we can upgrade the items that we already have. We're not going to get into that yet. So that's pretty great. We've got this available to us. Uh, we need to do a little bit more gathering now. If we could find uh, some boars now would be really great. So let's see. Oh, there's some over there. Let's see if we can take out a boar. No, that's a deer. A deer would be okay to take out, but they're really fast and kind of hard to get. Especially in the beginning when your weapon is not strong enough to kill them in like one or two shots. Yeah. All right. We need to look around a bit more. Uh, before we wander off too far from the base, let me show you guys about the map. This is a an important and very useful feature. So if I push M, it pulls up the map. Now, this yellow triangle is obviously where we are. Uh, if this box down here, if you click this, it'll make you visible on the map to other players on your server. That's very helpful if you're playing with other people. They'll be able to see where you are at all times. Now, down here in the bottom right, you see these different symbols. Now, I can click any of them, pick any one that I want. Uh, I'm going to put a house because this is where my first little starter base is. And then if I double click, double left click the spot where I want it, it'll put a marker on the map. So if you 
uh, you have a base, you want to mark it, you put the marker. If you want to remove it, you just right click. So boom, boom, markers on the map are super duper easy. They're nice. So I have a little base here. You know, I find a metal spot that's over here. I mark this. Uh, if you double click it, click it down, it allows you to name it in the bottom. So we'll say uh, copper. Say I found a copper node there. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's it's really, really handy. The map's really nice. But we're going to mark that now so we can find our way back. And we really need to find a couple boar. So I'm going to look around for a couple boar. And I think we'll be right back. And we're back. Okay, I found a boar. Uh, boars are good to kill in the beginning. It's not bad because they're, they're aggressive. So they won't run away from you. Uh, but they're not super strong. So you should be able to kill them decently easy. There we go. Nice. So now he's going to pop open and he gave me raw meat and leather scraps, which unlocks uh, more rag clothing, a bow, a raft, all sorts of stuff just unlocked it from that. So again, uh, you unlock the Ingrams or the craftable items in this game by picking up stuff. So you just want to pick up everything, anything that falls on the ground. It basically everything in this game, almost 99% of everything in this game has a purpose at this point. You want to basically pick everything up and it'll unlock more crafting stuff. It'll, uh, uh It'll always give you more recipes and you want to make sure that's it. You're always picking up every single thing you find, especially if it's new and you haven't seen it yet. Um, we got some necks down there. Did I get any meat? All right. We'll show you guys how to cook here real quick. Let's go back to the campfire or we'll go back to the base and make a campfire. Excuse me. So I get back to the little base within the ring of the the uh, bench. I'm going to pull out my hammer. I'm going to right click. Now under miscellaneous, I'm going to pull out the campfire. So I put this down. Now the campfire does need fuel to run, but it'll it starts, you know, with some fuel in it. So it's going there. Now you might be like, I want to cook this boar meat I just got. You know, I'm hungry. How do I do that? Well, in other survival games, you could just put it on the fire. But this game requires that you make like a, a stick, a, like a spit to go over the fire. So you want to pull out your hammer again, right click, go to crafting, and you want to make this the cooking station. Now it, it'll be red unless you have it like over the, over the fire in the right spot. So uh, you don't want it to be red. You want to put it right there. Boom. And now if we walk up to it, it says cook item. So if you had different things you wanted to cook, you could put them up here in your hot bar. So say I can't cook a raspberry, but if I could put a raspberry on there, I could push number five and put a raspberry on there. But we're going to put we only have one piece of meat, so we're going to cook that. So I'll push number six or push E to cook item. And I put that on there. And as you can go, it's cooking. Now, you got, you want to pay attention to this because it can actually overcook. But if you watch it here for a minute, uh, it'll make a little like whoosh, animation. And then the meat actually gets a little bit darker. Come on, baby. Cook for daddy. I'm hungry. Oh, oh, starting to brown up. It's almost done. We're getting there. Oh, and oh, it's done. Bam. Kick it up a notch with your spice weasel. And then you pop it off there and you light yourself on fire. Uh Oh, I might die. Don't die. Oh, I didn't mean to walk into the campfire. Okay, I lived. And uh, we're going to eat our delicious cooked meat now. And look what it does to our bar. See, our health bar went up huge. Our stamina bar went up a huge amount. Eating and drinking in this game is one of the most important things. It was way more important. I wish I had realized how important it really is when I first started playing Valheim. So that's a really, really important thing. Look for, you know, farming and high quality foods as soon as possible. But I think that's going to do it for episode one, guys. So if you guys enjoyed this video or you want to see more Valheim action, I would love to take this all the way to the end and the final boss with you guys. Uh, so show me you want to see more of the series and make sure you do me a huge favor and flex on that like button. Yeah. And for more daily video game Viking awesomeness, don't forget to subscribe. All right. I love you guys. I'll see you guys next time. Cheese.